Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm over at Blue Monkey Brewery for their new beer launch and I'll be taking you through a few of the new beer styles and a few quick reviews along the way. I also found this gent. Yeah, hello, man. <laughs> right then, I am in the illustrious Blue Monkey Canning Brew. There you go, look at that canning brew. Uh, first beer of the day, I nearly drank it, it was a pint. This is a 5.5% Rausch beer, so smoked German style beer, made given it's Oktoberfest time. Um, I think my taste and smell is coming back to be honest because this is nice, smoky, obviously, but it's kind of subtle, it's um, very grainy, bit of a caramel lick, and what's really interesting about this one is. It's got a bit of an old school beer flair, but it's very much a craft interpretation. So, yes, it's smoky, but it's also got like a, I don't know, the, the cleanness of um, kind of a very, uh, very fresh mild. And it's also got a lot of that very malt, fresh malt, malt forward, raw malt flavour. But, to be honest, smashing. Right, on to the next one. Right then, folks, uh, this is not one of the new craft beers. This is Blue Monkey's Chocolate Amaretto Gorilla Stout. Look, it's been around for a long time and everyone loves it. But, sorry guys, say hello. <laughs> Got Blue Monkey staff in. Just come to see that we're not uh, sitting in big barrels of uh, beer, but, um Just come to see if my taste buds have returned back from COVID. So, let's give it a go. Amaretto, yes. Chocolate less so. Interesting. Good as ever, though. Cheers. Hello again. Back in the room, Raggy is there doing a review. This is now the beer review room. Um, I've got two beers. The first one is a strong one. I actually don't know how strong this is, but I'll put a caption on or something because uh, we didn't have this on tap. This is the... Uh, Belgian Cherry Imperial Stout. I think it's 8% or 7.5%, but anyway, whatever it is, Belgian Cherry Stout. It's um, cacao nib, cherry puree, Belgian yeast. Smells, it does smell like a Black Forest Gateau, as most of these kind of flavors do, but it's a bit more subtle, a bit more refreshing. And on the taste now, Full disclosure, still got a bit of COVID tongue. Chocolate's not my strong point, so I'm not really getting heaps of it. There is a little bit in there, but the cherry and the Belgian yeast together makes just a fruit compotty vibe that is just mm, fantastic. Anyway, that one's done. And this little sample here is the New Hampshire. Uh, again, because I didn't buy a full one of these, I've not actually popped the ABV, so this is a terrible performance from me, but anyway. New Hampshire, it's got Citra, Idaho 7, Simcoe, I believe, after talking to the brewers, and the aroma is juice bomb heaven. If you like big IPAs, big flavor IPAs, this, this is there, and wow. Super fruity, super resinous, big bitterness. I'll be honest, I'm in general, I'm bored of big American IPA flavors in beer at the minute. We've overdone it, but that is a scintillating example. Cheers. Right then, here's another one, a slightly different angle of the, uh, of the brewery area, and we have a Peach Margarita Goes, which I think is probably the first Goes review on this channel completely for some reason. Um, I have already had a sample of this and it is very, very good, but let's do it again. So aromas, super fruity. It's, it is peachy, but it's more generic stone fruit, to be honest. And initial sip, it's immediately obvious that it is a sour or a goza. It's um, got that little lick of salt. The margarita element really works. Super peachy and What is interesting about it is it's not extreme, if that makes any sense at all. It is definitively of that style, but 
if you're not really sure about sour or ghost beers, as long as you like something fairly refreshing and a bit citrusy and fruity, you're probably going to like it. And despite my slightly dulled palate, I have to say, heaps of flavour. Um, I am going to get another gentleman's opinion though, because look who we've got here. Hello. The Ragster is in. So now, Rag Raggy is, I've just realised, off, uh, not, he's not going to get picked up by the microphone, so give us two seconds and we'll change. Right then, here he is. Raggy, what is your thoughts on the Goza? I was pretty impressed. I've got to be honest, uh, Blue Monkey Brewery, doing a great job with their craft beer range. For this, all about the peaches on the nose, on the taste, obviously peach again. A little bit of sea salt comes in. Don't be worried about the salt, it just adds to the flavour. It is um, genuinely a seasoning and not an yeah, impactful yeah, flavour. It's, a, for me, a great introductory uh, to the world of sour beers. So, you know, for your people who are Blue Monkey, you know, fans of Blue Monkey. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good introduction to that world and uh, you know it's a subtle introduction to the world of sour beers and very enjoyable there you go it's a thumbs up from me again not had a bad beer yet so far today on to the next one cheers We're outside, as you can see, by the van. There's the barbecue place. Very good barbecue. Had a great uh, little hot dog from there. But I have another pint. And this is labelled as uh, Junior 8 at 4.4%. Now, there's a bit more to it than that, because Junior 8's been around for a while. But it turns out the first of Blue Monkey's preference is a bit of a hybrid, which makes a lot of sense, really. Um, this Junior 8 is actually what ended up being the American Hazy, which I reviewed quite a few weeks ago now, their kind of first craft canned beer. So, 4.4%. Let's give Junior Hazy slash Junior Hazy. Well, that's not the name of it, but actually it is now. That's half of each name. Junior Hazy. Here we go. Cheers. As a gardener, I want to do This is the first time I've had it on tap versus out of the can, whichever version of the beer we're talking about. And um, super refreshing, super fruity, good citrus profile, and a good swathe of bitterness, pretty much. To be honest, it's exactly as the American hazy does taste. So, yeah, it's good. About to go live on Raggy's channel, so that'll be interesting. Cheers. All right, folks. Um, so as you can see, I've left Blue Monkey now. It's raining even heavier. I'm getting very wet. I'm gonna go for a pint down my dad's local because he lives near to here. And uh, yeah, fantastic day. Weather could have improved. Fantastic day, Blue Monkey. Incredible beers. And uh, I've got a few more to review, of course. So. Uh, I'll come in good due time once my taste comes back properly and uh, yeah. Good morning. It is a different day, in fact it's two days later. Um, I just wanted to do a proper outro for this video because, well, you know what it's like at these events. A few beers down the line and all forethought goes a little bit out the window. So, um, I'm out with the dogs. Say hi guys. Then the other one. Well, there's one of them. Where's the other one? Two. And the third. Somewhere down there. Um, so. Uh, that Blue Monkey launch event was, I think, a raring success, at least from the buyer's perspective, for sure. I don't know if Blue Monkey got what they wanted out of it, but from the perspective of someone who was there on the ground, by buyers, I mean, you know, people who are fans of their beer, not, not commercial buyers. But, um, yeah, it was very, very enjoyable. And, of course, now I'm recording, the dogs are we're in the muck so I'm not paying them any attention. Come on guys, let's go. And um, the the real outstanding component really was that, firstly talked to a lot of people, I don't think I had anyone say they had a beer that just wasn't for them. They didn't like particularly, I don't think, I don't think there was one, which is incredible on a whole new range of like eight beers. And then um, the fact that every one of those beers, whether it was, you know, a session pale or through to the crazy 8.6% one-off ginger beer run, 
all of those beers were so well balanced that yes they had the flavors they were intended to particularly thinking about the goza and the roush beer but they are flavors that could very easily put someone off if you're not familiar with that style and the blue monkey ones were just so impeccably balanced that everyone seemed to enjoy them so big thumbs up very much looking forward to seeing what they've taken to the beer festival uh, I can't remember if I filmed it, but earlier in the video, there was two, uh, sh two shots of some whiskey barrels uh, up at the top. They've got some beer maturing in those, one whiskey and one rum that they're taking to the beer festival, which I'm very excited about. And yeah, we'll give that a go. And uh, and speaking of the Nottingham Beer Festival, um, I'm now thankfully attending two days, the uh, trade event on the Wednesday and I'll be there Friday afternoon as well. So. That'll probably be the next video live from somewhere. Um, I'm still not doing proper straight up beer reviews because my taste is still, eh, it's okay, it's getting better. It's nearly that you'll probably see a new beer review in a week or so, I reckon. But um, yeah, until next time, cheers.